Imagine standing on the deck of a spaceship, staring out at the void. Your destination is not Mars, not even a nearby star, but a world 640 light years away. It doesn't flicker in the night sky. You won't find it in backyard telescopes. But for scientists and dreamers alike, Kepler 22b represents something almost mythical. The possibility of another Earth, or perhaps something even stranger. Discovered in 2011, Kepler 22b immediately stood out. It was the first exoplanet ever confirmed to orbit within the habitable zone of a sun-like star. That means it might be just the right distance for liquid water to exist. But that was just the beginning. This isn't just about another blue marble. It's about the tantalizing possibility that this distant world may harbor alien life, secret ecosystems, or even civilizations that have never set foot on land. Could Kepler-22b be a hidden cradle of life in the cosmos? Kepler-22b orbits a star called Kepler-22, located in the constellation Cygnus. It's about 15% closer to its star than Earth is to our Sun, yet the star is slightly cooler and smaller. The result? A planet that receives nearly the same amount of stellar energy as Earth does. This puts it squarely in the so-called Goldilocks zone. Not too hot, not too cold, but that's where the similarities start to diverge. The planet is roughly 2.4 times the diameter of Earth. That puts it in the category of a super-Earth, a world bigger than ours but smaller than ice giants like Neptune. What we don't know is just as important. Its mass, composition, and surface features are still a mystery. Is it rocky, icy, gaseous? That uncertainty is part of the fascination. Early models suggest that if Kepler-22b has an atmosphere with Earth-like greenhouse gases, its surface temperature could be close to a pleasant 22 degree degree. But that's assuming a lot. Without firm data, we can only speculate, and that opens the door to some wild and wonderful ideas. One of the most intriguing theories is that Kepler-22b is a water world. That means the entire surface might be covered by a global ocean, potentially hundreds of kilometers deep. It wouldn't be like Earth with continents and ocean basins. Instead, imagine an endless expanse of water, broken only by occasional island chains or floating ice. Beneath that ocean, a rocky or metallic core possibly hosting volcanic vents. And this matters because on Earth, hydrothermal vents Cracks in the seafloor where hot, mineral-rich water flows are teeming with life. They are some of the most alien habitats on our planet with creatures that don't rely on sunlight. Instead, they extract energy from chemical reactions. So if Kepler-22b has similar conditions, it could support life, not just microbes, but possibly more complex organisms. We might be talking about something like Earth's deep sea creatures bioluminescent jellyfish, giant tube worms, or something we've never seen before. Here's where it gets fascinating from a civilization standpoint. Even if Kepler-22b has life, maybe even intelligent life, would they ever be able to build rockets or radios? Consider this, fire is impossible underwater. That means no metallurgy, no forging of tools, no combustion engines. On Earth, Fire kickstarted every technological revolution, the Bronze Age, Iron Age, even the Industrial Era. Without it, how would a civilization develop technology? Some scientists theorize that an intelligent aquatic species might develop tools using volcanic heat or bioengineered materials. Maybe they'd find ways to manipulate geothermal energy, but it would be a radically different trajectory than anything we know. Let's take a real life example. On Earth, dolphins are highly intelligent. They use tools, recognize themselves in mirrors, and exhibit complex social behaviors. But they haven't built cities or telescopes. The constraints of their environment limit their technological evolution. Could a similar dynamic be at play on Kepler-22b? Our current methods for detecting alien life involve scanning exoplanet atmospheres for gases like oxygen, methane, and ozone chemicals associated with life on Earth. But what if alien life doesn't breathe oxygen? What if it uses silicon instead of carbon, 
or photosynthesizes using entirely different chemistry. This is the problem of anthropocentrism in science. We tend to search for life that looks like us, or at least like Earth life. Kepler 22b might host forms of life so alien that we wouldn't even recognize the signs. To address this, scientists are working on agnostic biosignatures, clues that indicate life without assuming a specific biology. That might mean looking for chemical complexity or strange atmospheric imbalances. But this kind of detection is in its infancy. After Kepler 22b's discovery, it quickly became a target for SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Radio telescopes were aimed at its star, listening for a signal. So far, nothing. But there are two possible explanations. One, there is no one out there. Or two, they don't want to be found. This idea is central to the dark forest hypothesis. Advanced civilizations may choose to remain silent, fearing hostile neighbors. In this view, broadcasting your existence to the galaxy is like shouting in a dark forest filled with predators. An aquatic species on Kepler 22b could be deliberately avoiding detection. Oceans absorb electromagnetic signals. Their cities, if they exist, could be deep underwater. Their technology invisible to our instruments. Let's imagine that Kepler 22b is inhabited by intelligent aquatic beings. What would it take for us to communicate? We already struggle to communicate with dolphins. Now imagine trying to talk to a species with no spoken language, no written script, and no common reference points. They might use sonar pulses, bioluminescent patterns, or chemical signals. Establishing trust would be even harder. Would they see us as friends or threats? What would they think of our machines, our probes, our desire to visit? We'd have to approach first contact with extreme caution, humility, and patience. Kepler 22b is unimaginably far. At current spacecraft speeds, it would take millions of years to get there. Even light takes 640 years to reach it. New concepts like light sails, warp drives, and generation ships have been proposed. The Breakthrough Starshot project, for instance, wants to send tiny probes to nearby stars using laser-powered sails. But Kepler 22b is 150 times farther than their target. More exotic ideas involve bending space-time or using wormholes. But these are firmly in the realm of science fiction, for now. If we ever reach Kepler 22b, it might be through robots first. Human explorers would require life support, shielding from radiation, and a way to either travel faster or survive for centuries en route. Why do we care so much about this distant, unconfirmed ocean planet? Because the search for life is the search for meaning. Discovering even microbial life on Kepler 22b would prove that we are not alone. And if intelligent life exists there, Beings who evolved independently, perhaps even who wonder about the stars as we do, it would change everything. It would challenge our philosophies, our religions, our assumptions about what it means to be intelligent, but it also forces us to reflect inward. Are we ready to meet the other? Do we treat our own oceans and ecosystems with the same curiosity and care we extend to exoplanets? Kepler 22b might be a cradle of life, or it might be a quiet, lifeless sea. But either way, it has become a mirror, a mirror to our ambitions, a mirror to our questions, and a mirror to our humility in the face of the unknown. Whether we ever make contact or not, Kepler 22b has already given us a gift, the inspiration to dream bigger, to search harder, and to never stop wondering what secrets the universe is still hiding. <music>